Wherever the mirror had taken Ewix and Dorn was most definitely not home. As the portal closed behind them, Ewix tucked the blue mirror into his bag, and the two of them began to take in their surroundings. It was clearly a dilapidated building. It was also apparent to Ewix that this was some sort of store. Shelves where products were once displayed were now empty and rusted. We should split up to find an exit. Turning to his human barbarian comrade, Ewix the halfling nodded and said, Yell if you find anything. And with that, they began to explore the building. It was a pretty large building, bigger than most of the stores Ewix had been in back in Faerun, and he couldn't see over most of the shelves, making this place a maze. Sunlight shone through the dilapidated roof, so at least he could see where he was going. This wasn't a problem for long, though, as he heard a scream come from a direction that Dorn went. Ewix began to run towards the sound of Dorn's heavy footfalls, each one hitting the ground like thunder. As the halfling turned a corner, with adrenaline pumping through him, he saw Dorn running as fast as he could, straight towards him. Get the mirror out, screamed the barbarian. Stunned, the halfling fiddled with his bag, his hand shaking, pulling out the mirror. And as Dorn got next to Ewix, he yelled, hurry, it's coming! Whatever Dorn had seen must have been terrifying. Ewix knew that Dorn had fought dragons, vampires, entire Null tribes. Ewix pulled out the mirror, and as he began to look and activate it, he heard a strange hissing noise. Ewix looked up and was disgusted, but was also on the verge of laughter. A cockroach the size of a cat was scuttling towards the pair. Ewix wasn't aware of Dorn being afraid of insects. But he looked up at Dorn, who was clearly disturbed. Ewix had never seen the normally fearless barbarian in such a state. Ewix looked back into the mirror, activating it. And the duo was pulled into another world in the multiverse, with Ewix having a small smirk on his face. He would never let Dorn live this one down. Hello everyone, Manic Monster Masher here, back again with another video. And as you may have guessed, today's video is celebrating the wonderful world of Fallout with a stat block on the humble Radroach to use in your D&D games. It is a simple creature, I know, but I was recently inspired by the release of the Fallout Commander decks for Magic the Gathering. And I wanted to do a Deathclaw, but starting a new job has really impacted my time that I could spend making videos, so I decided for something simple. So without further wait, let's get into it. So the Rad Roach is a mutated cockroach that is incapable of flight and is the size of a cat or small dog. That is it. While this creature is very simple, there are a few interesting theories and things that we can get from this. So first off, in our real world, some of the biggest insects are usually the size of the human hand. Uh, something like the Weta of New Zealand or the Heracles beetle of Latin America. And that is because of the current oxygen levels on our planet. I know you didn't sign up for a science video, but stay with me. I promise this is going somewhere. Uh, insects do not have lungs and instead take in oxygen passively through a bunch of uh, science mumbo jumbo that I don't have time to explain. The size that an insect can grow has a lot to do with how much oxygen uh, is in the air in the environment they find themselves in. The insects that lived millions of years ago, when the oxygen levels were much higher, 
consisted of animals such as the Arathu Arthurlopia. Arthropiluria. Arthropiluria. Uh, you'll have to pardon me on the pronunciation. I'm not sure how to say this. But it was a seven foot long millipede. Or the Megalonura, who was a dragonfly that weighed up to seven pounds. Its wingspan was a couple of feet. On a random side note, one of my favorite kaiju is a Megalonuria, Megalagoras. And if you haven't seen Godzilla vs. Megalagoras, go watch it. Anyways, uh, why mention all of this? Well, I think that the rad roaches of, of the Fallout universe are so big because of the oxygen levels, as opposed to radiation. Radiation in the real world, and keep in mind that this is not, the Fallout universe is not the real world. Radiation doesn't actually cause the types of mutations that make something bigger, for example. Radiation causes mutations, but those mutations often end up just being a cancer of sorts. Anyways, think about it. All industry and human activity basically stopped when the Great War of Fallout happened. Maybe the world's oxygen levels went up without the industry and human activity on the planet, and it let insects such as the rad roach grow to the size they are. Although, the in-universe explanation is simply mutation via radiation. This is confirmed in a couple of holotapes found in some of the games, as well as a computer log in an enclave uh, base in Fallout 3. This may be in indeed be the canon, but it's always fun and interesting to overanalyze something. So here's what I have come up with, and as you can see, this stat block is pretty basic. Its only attack is a bite attack. The rad roaches in the Fallout games are the weakest enemies typically in the game that they're featured in. And I wanted that to come through. Uh, I mean, you can literally, in, Fall in Fallout 3, you literally kill one with a BB gun, so yeah, they're not very tough. Uh, however, in Fallout 4, uh, they have the ability to irradiate with their bite attack. Uh, while this isn't in the stat block, I did find some interesting rules on a homebrew website that could definitely work to emulate radiation and mutations if that's the sort of game you're going for. With all that said, thanks for watching this video. This one was pretty simple and short, but I'm pretty sure you all can have some fun with it, especially with those uh, optional radiation abilities. And I'm pretty sure I'll have something a little more complex for the next video when my schedule starts to normalize at my new job. Anyway, thank you for watching, and whatever your favorite YouTuber says at the end of their videos, pretend I said that. Thanks!